In this Autodesk Maya tutorial, we're going to create a simple squash and stretch ball rig that we can use in multiple animations. For this one, we're going to use a simple sphere. In the next tutorial, I'll show you how to do the same rig with a quad ball, which can be easier to texture. But first, let's use this sphere. I imported a sphere from the poly modeling shelf. Then I'm going to click on the attribute editor and I'm going to translate the sphere up one in the Y direction. I'll press F to frame it so it's closer in the camera. Then I'll click on the Curves and Surfaces shelf and select a circle. It will come in on the ground plane and I'm gonna open my outliner. I'm going to rename this circle Main Controller and I'm gonna rename the sphere Ball. Now on the main controller, I'm going to click the radius and make it a radius of two. Then I'm going to click and make a new circle. I'm going to make this a radius of 1.5. I'm going to translate it up in the Y direction one, and I'm gonna label it squash controller. Then I'm going to make one more circle. This circle, I'm going to translate up one in the Y direction, and then I'm gonna give it a radius of 1.2. I'm also going to rotate it negative 90 degrees in the X direction. So now it's rotated negative 90 degrees and I'm going to relabel this rotate controller. Now I have three circles and a ball. I'm going to shift click all of these in the outliner and go to edit, delete by type history. Then I'm going to modify freeze transformations. Now everything is set to zero. I'm going to click on the ball and then right click assign new material. I'm going to assign a blin, and then on the blin color, I'll click this checkerboard, and then click checker. You can assign a different texture of your choice, but this is just so we can see how the rotations work. I'll press six on my keyboard to be able to see the texture. Then up in the deform menu, I'll select nonlinear squash. This adds a squash controller. Now in the outliner, I'm going to click on squash handle. That will bring up all the attributes. If you don't click here, you won't see all the attributes in the attribute editor. We wanna translate the Y to zero, and then we'll click on squash one. We're going to leave the low bound at zero and change the high bound to two. This will bring it directly to the top of the sphere. And now that is complete. Now we need to add an attribute to the squash controller. To do that, we need to open up the channel box. The channel box is located in the top right here, or you can go to Windows Channel Box. If I click it, and it's the first time you've opened up the channel box editor, it'll be this floating window. You can grab the window and then dock it right here. Now I have the channel box editor. If I have the squash controller selected in my outline, I can go to Edit, Add Attribute. I'm gonna call this attribute squash attribute, just so it's very clear. You could just label it squash, but I don't want you to be confused. And then on the minimum numeric attribute properties, we're gonna type negative 0.5, and for the maximum, we'll type 0.5 and press okay. So now we have this squash attribute down at the bottom. We need to make a connection between this squash attribute and the squash handle. To do that, we select the squash controller then go to Windows, General Editors, Connection Editor. In the Connection Editor, we scroll down to the bottom and we click Squash Attribute. Then in the Outliner, we click Squash One Handle. We must also click Squash One in our channel box inputs. Then we click Reload Right. Now, if we've done that in the right order, you'll see Factor. Once I click Factor, a connection is made and I can close this window. What did that do? Now, if you click on squash controller in the outliner, I can click on squash attribute. On any of these attributes, you can click on the text name, then hover your mouse in the viewport, hold the control key and drag the middle mouse button. And you can see now that it squashes and stretches, and I don't have to modify the squash handle independently. I can type this back to zero at any time. Now I'm going to parent these different controllers so we have a good hierarchy. I'll select the ball in the outliner, then middle mouse button and put it into the rotate controller. Then I'll select the squash handle and middle mouse button, drag it into the squash controller. Then I'll select the squash controller and middle mouse button it into the main controller. I'll select the rotate controller and middle mouse button it into the main controller. So now we have this hierarchy like this. 
So each of the rotate and squash controllers are at the same level and they control different things. There's one last thing we need to do. Right now, I can still select the ball in my scene. We don't want to do that. We want to only select these controllers. So to fix that, select the ball. Then in your channel box, select this far right icon and it'll put it into a new layer. We can call this layer ball. We can give it a color if we choose. Then right next to the color, we want to click this box. We don't want it to be T, we want it to be R for reference. And that means when the ball isn't clicked, I can't click it in the main, the main window here. So that's good. That means I can only click these individual controllers to move everything around. And if we look, the main controller will move everything. If I press W, the main controller moves all those things. If I click the rotate controller, it will rotate everything. And I click the squash controller, and I click the squash attribute, it will move up and down. One thing we want to fix before our rig is complete, I'll just press Z to go back to zero on those. So now everything is at zero. We want to only have the attributes that we need. So for the main controller in our channel box editor, we want to select rotate X to rotate Z, right click, and then we want to lock and hide selected because we're not going to animate the rotation on the main controller. Then we'll select the squash controller. And for the squash controller, we're not going to rotate and we're not going to translate. We're not going to scale. We're only going to do the squash attribute. So we can select all of these and then we can lock and hide selected. Now it's very obvious that the only thing we change here is the squash attribute. Then on the rotate controller, we only want to have rotate. So we can hide the translate and then on the scale, we can lock and hide selected. Now everything is very obvious about what we do in our animation. We can save this file and then import it into different scenes for us to use. In the next video, I'll show you how to do this with a quad ball, which is a bit easier to UV map and texture. Go ahead and save your file as a scene.